so V is uh, semi-stable, and uh, <coughs> and uh, we also know that this uh, is also known. So this. and uh, this uh, coaching by this. So that means uh, all the semi-stable points coaching by, uh, so it's a uh, VSS, is a uh, quasar projective. Objective, okay. So, so you can also go for, for stability, namely, so, so another thing is say V is a stable if, uh, if of course this is semi-stable or if uh, this orbit, uh, there's another thing, that's why I forgot. So, so this, uh, this, uh, and this uh, closure of orbit does not contain zero. Okay, that's a semi, so, so the equivalent I forgot. So I'm sorry, a little bit. Uh, fortunately, this is more long, so it's uh, I can see it. Okay, so so stable here means this is closed, and the stabilizer of V is finite. Okay, it's finite, and you can also describe it in the other way. Okay, so the uh, in particular stable points are, are open sets in the open dynamic open sets in the, in this. Uh, Modi space, okay, in this Modi space. So this means a kind of special quotient. So if, uh, so, so because sometimes the, the, the orbit, if it's semi-stable orbit is not closed, so, so you may need to identify several quotients, so called, called cat categorical quotient, okay. So, <coughs> so, so, for, for, uh, so, so in the first lecture, I said it's a state theorem. So I say a case stability imply an existing Kahn Einstein matrix. So, 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 so now I want to, uh, and for, for quite a while, I try to, uh, try to see uh, this uh, case stability, which is, uh, was defined purely geometric, which try to see uh, is fit into this uh, fr frame, okay, fit into frame. And, uh, and I tried for a while and it didn't work. So now I know why it didn't work. So I will show you, you need to extend this a little bit, okay? So, so, okay. I mean, there are a lot of uh, results on, uh, on, on this. For example, uh, Manford proved that before, So, so called. Uh, uh, maybe I have to skip it. So, because time. Okay. So, so now I want to uh, extend this. So, so for a large part of this is the uh, work of Xiang Pao, from one of my former students, and uh, he's now at Wisconsin now. So, so, so what I want to do is uh, I want to extension of uh, called uh, according to stability of pairs. So it's uh, was studied by uh, Xiang. So this time we take a two. So actually, yes, easy part and uh, more substantial part. So so now let's take uh, two representations. G representations, V and W. Okay. So I take a V to be not zero, V means in a capital V, and the W, small w is in a capital W, okay. So, so this is in a capital W, okay. So, we define, so we define the following things. So we define a, say, say a, the pair of V, W is a, a semi-stable. I will define stable later. A stable a little bit trickier, okay? I need, so let's do a semi-stable first. So if, uh, if uh, G of V, W, closure, so where, 
So this cloak orbit is inside of a projection space of V. So you take direct sum and projectify it. Okay, project. And, uh, and uh, so where this means uh, the homogeneous coordinate inside P, V, W, and uh, this is inside the P, V, uh, sorry, I should say. Uh, mm. So it's actually the same. So it's a, uh, let's put it this way, okay. So this is a P, V, zero, it's empty. It, it, uh, it doesn't look different. Does not look uh, what I said before was a little bit uh, look different. But uh, in the end, you can prove it's the same. But let's just for simplicity do this. Okay. So you can think this is a subspace inside here. Subspace. So so then we try and the remark. Of course, I mean this is easy. So 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 if you take a V to be a Trivial I, I things, I'll take so so then uh, <coughs> maybe I should start with W there. Sorry, then uh, this uh, one W is uh, semi-stable as a pair. Same is a uh, sorry uh, if and only if W is semi-stable in GIT. So, so, so then uh, we can. There are something one can do. First, it's uh, um, actually we don't know. We so this is uh, so we try to extend the sum of these to here. So this definition basically is not is corresponds to this, right? It's a, the definition is uh, is uh, it defined uh, is in correspond to these things here. So. So then we wonder whether you can first wonder whether this uh, easy definition extension here whether you can you can do these other two. So this is not clear yet. I will mention come back later. So for so but this can be too. So this is usually called the Hilbert manifold criterion, and uh, this turns out to be. Okay. So this is proved by Paul Jean Paul. So. <coughs> So this theorem says the following. The proof used the so so we we w as above. So then say uh, V W is uh, semi stable if uh, if and uh, only if for any lambda, for any lambda from a C star. By lambda means uh, one parameter subgroup, okay? One parameter subgroup. This, uh, this uh, lambda W is less equal to W. So uh, before I go on, since I talk about stability here, I say there's an easy way of defining a stability, namely if you purely extend this in that things, then uh, it does not look like a good definition because you cannot prove a corresponding here with the manifold criteria. Okay. Uh, Why in the classical case, so this criterion, it can be also proved for stable case. In that case, it's a, it's a tricky inequality here. It's tricky inequality. Okay. So, 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 extension to stability I will do later. Okay. So the proof of this is a, is a, is a very much yes. A uh, GIT case, you, you um, just uh, 
What's your question? Sorry again. <laughs> Well, I'm just trying to see how it's just like a UAP case. So there I have a lower bound by zero of the weight. Yes. And here it's an upper bound by the weight of V. Yes, but in that case, uh, I guess uh, here I, I should use a W here. Then uh, I'm sorry, because I realized that uh, problem. So, so, so in the GIT case, if you, oh, you are right. Mm. Show you other way around. Mm. Okay, so, okay, I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> so, 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 okay, so the, the proof basically goes uh, as uh, follows, and so, should I say, it's, so, maybe I uh, give a proof, then I will fix the things here, and thanks for, for, Okay. Okay. So 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 this direction is easy. Okay. This direction is easy because uh, um, so if a lambda is a uh, weight, so you compute uh, say alpha goes to zero. Okay. So then uh, this uh, lambda alpha of V W is uh, is simply a uh, if uh, alpha goes to zero, and uh, and uh, and uh, you, so you think it's homogeneous. So this is uh, an, you can you can multiply by some. Uh, so this is same as e minus uh, lambda uh, v lambda v, right? And uh, and uh, lambda alpha. Because it's a homogeneous coordinate, so you can multiply by some constant. Okay, so then uh, the first one we are goes to uh, so see this acting on that. So the first one we are according to your definition of a weight goes to some zero here. Okay, so so second is a limit alpha goes to zero exponential of uh, Okay, so this is acting on that as a weight, so this is lambda, this, uh, sorry, W, so this is alpha, sorry, this is alpha, sorry for, for that. So it's a lambda W minus lambda V, and acting on a W. Okay, so, so what's the right thing? I cannot have this to goes to infinity, Other, uh, this cannot go to zero because otherwise uh, it has an uh, intersection with a uh, thing. So can not zero, so this why this should be, uh, I guess, should be less equal to zero, right? Because if it's a positive, this goes to zero, this fact. Okay. So that's you get here. Okay, so, oh, oh, sorry, I didn't plan to do that, but uh, since I had a problem, I fixed this. <laughs> so, so then uh, uh, for converse, it's, uh, it's, uh, so I, I don't have time to prove it, so I tell you basic steps, okay? So this is uh, ex imitate what uh, uh, is done in the, in the GIT. So, so first step, so what, what you do is you let uh, capital T be a G be a, a maximum tori. Torus. Torus. Algebraic torus. Okay. So then, uh, then you want to, I want to claim the following. First thing I want to prove, this is, uh, the, the condition is true for, for, for capital the T. Okay. So I want to say uh, this uh, T, okay. <coughs> So let's put this way. So, so then the G by Gaudati conversation is K, is a compact group, and T and the K. Okay. So if, uh, so if it's not true, so if, uh, so, <coughs> so we, we prove by contradiction, so if uh, this, uh, maybe I, 
drop this. Okay, so um, so first I, I want to say it's a it's a um, so first the best from here I want to prove the first step to prove this t of v w intersect of this uh, p v zero is empty. Okay, so uh, not so. so it's not empty if uh, if it's not the same mistake. If uh, V W is not the same mistake. Okay. So because reverse, I prove this, and which when I prove this direction, that means uh, I assume this is true for all the all the all the this uh, one primary subgroup. So I want to prove it's semi-stable. So I prove by contradiction. If it's not semi-stable, then uh, what I do is uh, so by definition, that's 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 is uh, you ha we have this for G. So now I first reduce the capital T. So then you say so one lemma <laughs> due to Richardson to from a T to a, to some uh, one parameter subgroup. Okay. So so. So first I prove this, then I prove uh, step two, use, uh, use uh, uh, Richardson's. So this last step is exactly the same as uh, before. So to get, uh, to get C star, get lambda contain the T. Okay. So get lambda contain T means uh, this, uh, for instead of uh, uh, replace this T by uh, by lambda here, you still have this. But then that implies this weight in the quality cannot be true. Okay, so so that's uh, if one time after that I I show you all the details, because otherwise I think the time is uh, <coughs> so so once I have this, I uh, also <coughs> remind you uh, uh, also uh, uh, to uh, record repeat things in a, in a in the in the classical GIT theory, so maybe I uh, do some extension, define some. Okay. So now we fix the uh, fix the norms, Hermitian norms, on the V and W. Okay. So we are just I I, I will first appeal to I just use the same notation. Okay. You you understand. So so then we define a so called. Uh, VW with uh, acting as is a function defined on a group G, which is simply log of a sigma V minus log of a sigma W. Okay. So so this is a uh, norm on the V, this is norm on the W. Okay. So so then uh, you can have a simple lemma due computed by Paul, it says uh, this uh, P V W, this functional, is actually can be written as a log of a tangent of square of a distance of this sigma V, sigma W, and uh, sigma V there. So this distance is uh, the where the d is the uh, distance on the project space. On the project space, with respect to standard metric here. Okay. So then the from here you see uh, this. Uh, from here you see uh, this is uh, that implies. So this is uh, like an uh, analogy of a uh, from. Common uh, this uh, conf base theorem says uh, this uh, v v w is uh, semi stable if and only if if and only if this is bounded from below. So it's namely because uh, if this goes to zero, let's go stop. Anyway, let me just assume that. Okay, so 
Yeah. If this goes to zero, that means uh, uh, this also goes to zero. So that goes to minus infinity. Okay. So 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 this is the extent. Basically, there's a similar to a conf less. Okay. So in that case, you only have a one functional here. One 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 of these is trivial. But one of these trivial. Okay. So so. <coughs> So once uh, uh, this is about the semi-stability, okay. So so now I want to define a stable case, okay. The stable case is a little bit uh, trickier. So because uh, um, if you do a strict definition, it's not uh, um, it's it's not very use, uh, useful. So so now let me define a semi-stable a stable case. Sorry. So to define a stable, we need uh, to introduce some uh, something. Okay. So so let me uh, um, consider uh, um, so G X canonically on uh, on this group. Okay. So this is just uh, all the uh, uh, n by n, n plus one by n plus one matrices. So so by left chance multiplications. Okay. So then uh, what we do is a uh, is a uh, so this is just uh, a here sigma here goes to sigma a. Left application, okay, uh, maybe sigma. So, so now let uh, u be a. Uh, so only thing is how I need to define this, and this is a tensor with a q. So where q is defined as follows. Okay, this q is chosen for. Uh, uh, and for later purpose, where Q is called degree of uh, of V with respect to uh, and so with respect to a uh, uh, maximum. Actually, in the end, it does not depend on this maximum torus T. Okay, so this is defined as follows. So so. So, so what we do is uh, we can look at uh, and this. Uh, I just think. Uh, so, so this defined as follows: you take uh, m r to be a uh, m z to be a lattices of for, for this tori, for this torus. MR to be a to be a okay. so then uh, you can uh, uh, giving a T you can uh, uh, do a re uh, re uh, decomposition is uh, decomposed into a A of some uh, uh, this weight of VA where VA is a uh, is a uh, um, <coughs> Is uh, this uh, this uh, uh, v in a, such that uh, t v t is inside capital T equal to some uh, some lambda a t some weight t is inside capital T. Okay. So and where the a is uh, so so is is. Uh, so this A is uh, inside here. It's, uh, it's this. Uh, so A is uh, inside uh, M Z, such that uh, A A A V A is not zero. Okay. So namely, there are some V 
here, so so that is now it's uh, it, so so that this is eigenvalue. I play, okay. So so, oh, sorry, we this is capital V A is not zero, and I define A V, <laughs> which is A in the A such that the small V, uh, so A is uh, not zero, where V is uh, sum of V A. In according to this decomposition, so 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 then uh, we define a weighted uh, polytope and V. What's the degree V? I will define. I, I'm defining degree V here. Okay. So I define degree V here. So. Okay, so so and, and the polytop is uh, the convex hole, okay, of uh, of A V inside of uh, M R. Okay, so now we can define a degree. Okay, so so now we can define a degree. So, so now I apply this uh, the polytop of identity. Okay, so identity matrix here. I denotes identity matrix here. So this is just a thing. Uh, actually, n plus one. This uh, uh, this is just n simplex here. So, so but. Uh, so then the degree is defined as follows. So degree is uh, simply defined via via minimum of a k such that k uh, positive and uh, n v is contained in the k times n i. Okay, all the polytops are inside the uh, M R. Inside MR, okay. So, so, so this is a, uh, um, and this is just a scale by uh, by k times by k times, okay. So, so this is defining a V, and uh, and then we uh, we can get uh, an. So, so first uh, is clearly since uh, since this is uh, this is a standard uh, representation here, it's a uh, it's a uh, simplest representation. So we get uh, this is a uh, G V I Q. So this time this uh, I Q is inside the U, defined to be a G L of a Q. Okay, I already defined. I think I already defined. Okay, so this clearly is a, is a, this P V zero is empty inside of uh, this is inside of uh, P V U, right? Because uh, this is identity matrix. And this is also equivalent to uh, which I needed later. So this is uh, this uh, maybe I don't need this. Okay. So 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 in in particular, this say uh, this uh, this v i q is uh, semi stable. It's a semi stable. Okay. It's always semi stable. Because this uh, identity matrix, is so, so uh, action on that is is not has the largest uh, things. Okay. So so now we define a stability. Okay. 
So I say, uh, v, again, it's still VW as before, and both are not zero. Okay, so in the VW, is uh, stable, or maybe you should say a case stable, is because it's a, <coughs> so if a, a closure of the orbit, maybe I first write down, okay. The closure of orbit is contained in a, so the formula here is a little bit uh, complicated uh, in content in a, but I will explain geometrically it's clear, okay. So contain the P of V plus W cross P V plus U. This is one piece. And the union with uh, P, so actually last one is not quite the condition. So P V W minus uh, And the cross, cross this P, V, U, P zero. Okay. So let me explain. Okay. So, so intuitively what we have here. So, so inside of this. Uh, so suppose inside of uh, uh, P, V, W. Okay. And I'm sorry, the closure of this cross, uh, I'm sorry for <laughs> this. VIQ is 10, 10. Yeah. Okay, it's 10, 10. So, so, so I draw a picture. So this is, this. suppose this is a, uh, and uh, P, V, U, okay? Of course, this action is diagonal action, acting on each of these factors, right? So then uh, this is, uh, say, P, V, uh, P, V, zero, okay? And then uh, is, uh, there's a com complement, project uh, compl compl complement project space is uh, P, V, zero plus V, U. And here is two P V zero and P V W. Okay. Okay. So so now you if you have a sequence of say V sequence of points here, say you see sigma i V sigma i w. Okay. Suppose you have a sigma i v and uh, basically sigma i acting on identity so this is just sigma i q tensor q here okay so so this condition says here so if this sequence uh, if a sequence here has a limiting point inside here then corresponding sequence has a limiting point it must be inside here that's the first condition okay otherwise if this uh, sequence stay out, uh, stay stay away from this, stay, how do I, how do I say? If uh, if this uh, sequence stay away from this, then uh, this uh, you want this sequence to stay away from that. That's basically semi-stable condition. Essentially semi-stable. Okay. So only condition you added. So this is basically your semi-stable condition. Okay, and uh, the only condition says uh, if the sequence goes to this. Uh, Opposite to this, and uh, this part has to go to complete opposite to that. Okay, so <coughs> so this is stronger than uh, a stable things. Uh, uh, stronger than semi-stable. Okay. So <coughs> so now the theorem, and uh, if you do a same this way, uh, if you extend define a definite uh, case stability this way, and this. Uh, is still true, so this says uh, um, V W is uh, stable if uh, 
if and only if. So for any lambda, one primary subgroup, so we okay. So whenever I guess which we I wrote. Okay, so so if and only if this uh, whenever. So I want this uh, first. Uh, this is speak it here, and uh, you have a strict inequality. So this is like a semi stability condition. Okay, and uh, whenever this degree of uh, v times uh, lambda of i, this is like highest weight or smallest weight. It's less than, uh, less than uh, this. Uh, so, so again, this is, actual, this is actual condition which follows from this part. Follows from this part. Okay. And the proof again is the same as uh, uh, same as uh, 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 man, uh, here with the manifold criterion in the semi-stable case. Okay. So, so maybe here I, I uh, mentioned, uh, for example, one way you define a stability is uh, if you just imitate exactly as a, a GIT case, you may forget about this. You can still look at only this orbit. You can ask all the limiting point of a uh, orbit lies in the lies in this part. Of course, you can define that. That's actually is also extension of a uh, stability condition. But then uh, I I don't know how to prove this criterion. Okay, there's a first step in the proof does not carry over. Okay, I maybe need you to figure out. It's uh, actually at the beginning I also made a little mistake to do that. <coughs> so. So, so, so I, I, we have this. Okay. So now let's see why. Uh, next, I see uh, how this to do with the geometry. So, so relation to geometry. Okay. To to the geometry means the things I'm con I considered before. So. So this is uh, says uh, as uh, follows. So now, uh, giving a manifold, giving a algebraic manifold, polarized. Okay. So air is a line bound over M and the positive. The M ample, ample line bundle. Okay. So what we can do is, uh, and uh, for air is fairly big, as I said before, you can embed. Uh, so M can be embedded in the CPN by, uh, by H0 by basis of M. That's a fixed one of these embeddings. Okay. So then we can define uh, two, let's be, we can in, in, introduce the uh, two coordinates for this. Okay. So once is a, uh, Rn and uh, delta M. A uh, hyper discriminant. That's hyper. So first, let's be defining a chalk coordinate. So this is a chalk coordinate, and this is a hyper discriminant. Hyper discriminant. Okay. So, so this is uh, an, as uh, follows: the first R n. So, so you can take a. Uh, Take G K N be a Grassmannian, so all the P inside the C N plus one, and the dimension of a P is a K plus one. Okay. So, so then the, uh, what you define, you can. This is also same as a P inside of a, of a, maybe P bar inside of C. P n n and the dimension of uh, this is projective subspace. P bar is k. Okay, okay. 
So, so then you define a given m, you define a zm to be all the p bar inside of uh, in in this grass vanian, the n minus n minus one, such as p bar intersect m is not empty. It turns out this is hypersurface. You can count in a parameter. This is a hypersurface. So since this is a hypersurface of a, it's a hypersurface of degree d equal to d d is a degree of a, of m inside of CPN inside CPN. Okay. So so since it's a degree d, so you can see uh, this is a z m is the zero. Okay. So s is a, a section for some section of g this grass manning. Okay, and uh, and a grass manning of some uh, some uh, this uh, and this uh, uh, standard uh, line bundle D. Okay, so O one is uh, um, so some canonical line bundle on uh, uh, how do I say it's a uh, it's a determined universal bundle land raised to D D D power. So so. <coughs> So all you can see because uh, the uh, a uh, and the, this uh, uh, Grassmannian uh, H2 is Z. So this is uh, just uh, if you orient it uh, um, with respect to a complex structure, then uh, this just uh, uh, this line bound is just defined by uh, has a first chain class uh, degree D. Okay. So so then uh, um, from here you can do uh, the following. So you can see uh, in fact it's uh, so R. So this is. Uh, so I put this to be Rm. Maybe I put this to be Rm. So then, uh, so Rm. So I, I need would, I need you to to go with to stay with me. Okay. So to so so this actually can be thought as a, can can be because of section here. And use a pre bending. You can think of this is as a polynomial. Identify with a polynomial in the matrix. Okay, of a degree. So maybe I still use the S here. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, then uh, this S, we are corresponding to a polynomial of a degree n plus one plus d. So okay. A section here use a pre clean bending. We are we are give rise a, a polynomial in in, in this. Uh, Space in this space. So this space is a, a space of matrices of uh, n plus one times capital n plus one. Okay. So this uh, uh, and, and so this uh, is like a resultant. Okay. So so then our R m is just uh, this polynomial. You just uh, this just for convenience later. I m my d bar, ten to d bar order. Okay, so so d bar is some uh, um, number we we'll are do later. Okay, maybe I do it later because I don't have a d bar yet. Okay, so 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 I get one polynomial. So, I get one polynomial, and then uh, let me get the second polynomial, which is the following. Okay. So, so it's a hyperdiscriminant. So that's a. So you take a m cross C P n minus one. Okay. So you can embed this into a into a CPN, that's where this is uh, giving cross is the CPN minus one. So second is the identity. Then you can go to a so-called secondary map, goes to uh, some uh, project space of uh, 
of this. Of this. Okay. So use a secondary map. That's uh, multiply corresponding entries. Okay, okay. So, so then it turns out this is a why you can define y m. So this is important to pause this, otherwise you don't get a, an, uh, in some sense this corresponds to Ricci curvature actually. So H inside of uh, this P of M V of N cross N plus one. Okay. Then uh, I want this ten in the space of N cross C P N is contained in the in H. For some P. For some P. So namely this H is a I'm sorry, let me do it again. Okay. And so so I need uh, this to be a uh, drop this. And this is in a uh, an Okay, so this has a hyperplane here, and it's a point in the dual space. Okay, so in the dual space, and uh, I want this hyperplane contain some tangent space. Okay, so this is called a hyperdiscriminant. Okay, and uh, you you can of course you can do the same thing without this factor, and you get a discriminant. But that then uh, if you just start with n without this, you might uh, get some degeneracy. Some some degenerate. So this uh, stabilization process is uh, is uh, is uh, uh, is good. Okay. So so then uh, you can check. So that's then degenerate. So y m is a hypersurface. Again, it's a hypersurface of a hypersurface inside here of a degree d bar equal to. A equal to N D plus N plus one minus mu bar. Mu. So mu is determined by first chain class. It's a C one M minus C one R to N minus one divided by okay. So that's a D bar. Okay. So 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 I get the uh, um, so so then uh, this again since it's a hypersurface, it's a, you get another polynomial of a degree d. D bar, sorry. D bar, okay. Can you say what sense this corresponds to Ricci? And so multiplied by this, this actually corresponds to Ricci curvature. So I will add, uh, uh, but um, and that's actually Sean Paul's. Proof of a next theorem I will state, but I will explain to you later. Right now, it's I, I hard to see. Right now, it's purely algebraic. Okay. okay. So, 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 so this is uh, this polynomial is inside of. Uh, look at this because of uh, things. This is inside of a C, of uh, of uh, m, n cross n plus one. Okay, it's a polynomial. Stay here. So, so then what we define, we, we normalize so that uh, take Rm to be Rm as d bar, okay? And, uh, and delta m to be a delta m and d, m plus one. To make them to be in the same degree. So this both inside of a CR of, a, uh, so maybe, is not in the same space. So one is in the CR of uh, of this M plus one. Okay, and this next inside of this. And R is a uh, M plus one degree and D bar. Just make okay. So Okay, so, so so right now seem to be these uh, these things are uh, just uh, do some normalization. So so let's call the so call 
these things yeah, and the coordinate so since the shunt part defined this let me just uh, So if you just want, that's the chalk coordinate. Okay, that's already you need you need you uniquely determine this. Okay. It depends on the choice of sample. Uh, uh, it depends on choice of embedding. Yes. Okay. So this this is a uh, so a fixed air here. You fix the embedding. Okay. So it depends on choice of embedding. Okay. So so so. Uh, okay. So let me um. So. <coughs> And, and let me see, try to sh prove the, okay. Okay, now theorem, Annals. So he proved these, uh, the following things, okay. So uh, maybe I will state uh, uh, that in a moment, okay, maybe I, let me first uh, introduce this. So, so, let me, how do I? Okay. So, he proved uh, two things. So, one is the uh, is, uh, following. So, maybe I'll explain the notation later. Okay. So, so first is uh, this F sigma, might I will expand F in a moment. Uh, some universal constant depends only on dimension of a P R M okay. and uh, and uh, also this uh, this J sigma minus uh, this uh, P of uh, sigma v i q of sigma is bounded. Okay. Actually, he he didn't quite prove a second. I, I actually, um, but he observed uh, is uh, this might be true. So the proof I I give a proof a second. So so let me see what that means. Okay. And then you see uh, somehow the rich curve which comes in. Delta of M doesn't actually carry any more information than R of M, does it? Hmm? Does delta of M carry more information than R of M, or is it just? R R M does not carry does not carry any information on the curvature. And the yeah. delta M carry information on the curvature. So how does it go into the what goes into the definition of delta? You just other than the embedding of M in the protective frame. I don't see. And say it again. So uh, here, uh, essentially information is still in the, this delta M and RM. So this is just uh, some normalization coefficient in order to make these things. So say what your question again, sorry. No, I'll have to go over it and think. I, I uh, or maybe I can talk a little bit later. Maybe there, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Okay, so, so where, where f sigma is simply a, a, is a, is a, this k energy, I, yes, they are defined, restrict to this, okay? So the, this is a energy omega phi is just a minus zero, one, and from n, this uh, come from rich curvature. You take any path from zero to five, and then look at the re and n and the rich curvature of omega plus square root of d d bar phi phi t minus uh, say suppose this omega t omega t of uh, mu and uh, mu over n and the wedge omega t to n minus minus one. Okay. So this so-called k energy and the, the critical metric of this are k Einstein matrix or is a, of a k matrix with constant scalar curvature. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, this, this phi sigma is a 
is given by a, you know, the pullback things I said before. Okay, I said yesterday. Anyway, depends on. So T S sigma is just uh, this energy. Okay. So so this uh, tells you uh, this is uh, uh, this is a uh, summation. And uh, this uh, phi, which d bar phi, which is uh, omega i. Okay, it's the energy I had before. Okay, and respect to this, uh, this uh, uh, finite families. Okay, uh, respect to this uh, sigma in a group. So, 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 so this uh, uh, result is uh, on one hand is completely defined in terms of curvature or functions on the on the manifold. On other sides is defined by these two coordinates. It's uh, it's quite algebraic. It's, uh, okay. It's uh, it's uh, so so it actually it's uh, it's uh, an, it, it's not so easy to see actually. So, so what is A N? A N? Say A N there. Oh, A is some constant. I didn't oh. space out. So A N is some constant right. depending on our dimension. So and P means what is P? P is a function I define here. It's just a diff. Oh, I erased. So it's a. I take a. You have a two representation now. Uh -huh. So. So one, this representation, so this is your V here now, maybe I, sorry, I did. So this is your W. You have a two, so clearly the, your group, linear group uh, induced action here, right? So you have a two representation, and this is your V point. This is a W. So then uh, this P, PVW is just a log of, uh, I think, V minus log of W. This is just two Hermitian norms. Hermitian norm. Okay. Okay. So. Yes. You got square, right? Uh, square. Yes, I have a square. Yes. Okay. So, so, so this just uh, uh, basically uh, p is just a measure of difference of norms here. Different norms. Okay. So, so. So using this, you can um, prove this is uh, so. So then uh, eventually you can take a uh, say. Uh, so we we call uh, this is uh, so maybe a fixed. So I say uh, M is a state. So it's called uh, maybe I call CM stable. If uh, if corresponding this R M and delta M. Is a is a, okay is a stable. Okay, or you can say it's about semi-stable and. Uh, Where does the metric of m enter into the definition of y m? Pardon? Say it again. Where does the metric of, of the k form? What is what is any of It does not uh, come in. Yes. So this, uh, uh, it, it, you don't see that uh, metric here. So because the hyperdiscriminant is defined globally, you don't see their metric uh, is that information here. So, so, so to prove this, what do you do? You need to use uh, like uh, uh, Goldig Riemann rules here to push uh, both sides to to compute uh, like uh, DD bar curvature of uh, both the DD bar of this and compare them. So, 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 so this only say uh, after you after you do integration, you don't see a point-wise curve. It becomes global quantity. That, uh, so, and um, yeah, so right. yeah, mm. it's uh, in this relation implicit here. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, how do I say? So, <laughs> so, so anyway, you don't see a, a point-wise uh, curvature here. Okay, and uh, you see a point of a curvature because you have an integral expression of this 
for function. Okay. So, 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 so then from here you can prove the following theorem. Maybe I stay. So say if uh, M is a K stable, actually it's equivalent. So M is a K stable, I say. So that's uh, for simplicity, I assume, before I don't have time to state in general, okay. Assume this uh, M has no holomorphic vector field. So no holomorphic vector field. The holomorphic vector field is, is zero. Then this is K-stable if and only if this Rn. Yes. So this is uh, what I uh, using uh, this uh, setup of Xiang. Okay. <coughs> so, 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 um, so basically, what I need to do here is uh, based on what Xiang did, is I want to prove uh, this uh, equivalence, this two stability things, two stability things. So, so in this way, you can. Uh, can uh, bring uh, this case sta sta case stability condition into this uh, this extended uh, framework of uh, geometric invariant theory, which involves uh, two representations. Two representations. So, uh, one more. Uh, finally, let me see a question. I don't know. Is uh, if you consider uh, a question, if uh, if we take uh, if if if. Uh, Say a G V W closure of if we define this is a, is contained a, contained the G V prime W prime, then let's say a, we take a, suppose a V W is a, then say a, okay. So, so uh, take these relations. So then we put say modular space defined to be a, for this V W. Okay, defined to be all uh, this uh, V W and uh, V W is semi-stable. Okay, and. Uh, and uh, coaching by these uh, relations. So if I have this, I will put them as same equivalence class. Okay. So 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 in the GIT case, this is just a corresponds to uh, this. Uh, in the GIT case, this could just correspond to V plus uh, this uh, G cat category quotient. Okay. But uh, this time, so 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 this is defined. So then the question is. Is uh, M is this modular space quasi projective? Quasi projective. Okay. I I don't know yet. I, I mean, except this classical case, except classical case. So 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 the, the reason for this is uh, you cannot directly use the invariant polynomials. Even even though in a, improving this criterion, manifold here the manifold criterion I use the invariant polynomials, but uh, but that's uh, that invariant polynomial only t invariant polynomials. So 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 it will be interesting to see uh, how develop some machinery to prove this is also quasi projective. Maybe I stop here. Thanks. Sorry for over time. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's a difficult. Very simple. The the result that you present uh, yeah. from John Paul, the, the the inequality. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. that, but the the bound constant are, are they the same one? No. Uh, no, no, different. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, you can put them this same. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, I'm trying to understand. Maybe, but what he was asking before, just 
what in the definition of y m could have to do with the curvature? So I mean, is, is something to do with the fact that you're looking at the tangent space and maybe how the tangent space? I think so. Now? Actually, I don't quite. That's actually a good question. I I don't know what. Uh, and how to how to explain to you? But certainly, I from here result here is certainly y m related to Ricci curvature, and you can also multiply more factors, probably get certain product of uh, curvature, and but and so so as you said, it's got to have something to do with the tangency here. Tangency is condition. It's like there's some kind of theorem that like if you in, in average curvature over like a sphere or something like that, you get sort of it's maybe related, but I don't know how to say how to explain so it specifically. Stabilized by CPN minus one or something like that. You can do CPN minus one, and then you maybe uh, maybe CPN minus two. Mm -hmm. Then you get uh, you will get contribution of a square of Ricci curvature. Uh -huh. Some integral comes out from that. Uh -huh. So at a certain point, I thought maybe maybe this kind of you you can take a lot of hype multiply things to get hyper discriminants. You, you only get a certain parts of a curvature integral here. And at certain <coughs> sometimes guys thought that maybe one can recover like Chen Wei theory from this discrim all kinds of discriminants. Uh -huh. But I haven't seen that yet. Uh -huh. <laughs> because there are so, so it seems to be that certain curvature integral of curvature cannot be recovered by this process. But um I mean, it's, uh, it's magically the rich curvature recovered from, from here mm -hmm. and the uh, linear order. So the study of such maps uh, starts with Sh Sean Paul's paper? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I think that is his uh, best work <laughs> so far. Any other questions? Yeah. So let's thank uh, Thank you. Yeah, I think I'm. Uh, uh, so how many how many of these curvature formulas? For example, all these uh, Bochen, Donaldson mm -hmm. functionals. Yeah. How many of them can be recovered from this uh -huh. this process? Mm -hmm. um, I am not sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, at the beginning, I thought maybe one can recover all of them. Uh -huh. It does not seem like that. Is this pair of polynomials something to do with the virtual vector bundle, which? Yes, fine. you choose the different virtual vector bundles, and you get uh, you know that. And uh, but the things is how how you how you interpret. Uh, oh, how many of them can be can be interpreted as uh, discriminants? Uh -huh. yeah. So I think uh, probably you can do this. For example, in the functional, if you have a Ricci wedge Ricci, and then metric, this can be recovered. Uh -huh. Maybe by take a two product or something. Like that. Take m minus two instead of this. Uh -huh. Instead of m minus one, mm -hmm. okay, and you can do the stabilizing process by take p one, p two, to all the way to p n minus one. Seems to be p n is uh, then become trivial. Okay, you don't see a curvature anymore. <laughs> so, so you you get uh, maybe a curvature to n minus one order, and uh, seems to be only rich curvature coming. At least uh, it's a, uh, I guess hyper is, uh, is is not so easy to study even, mm. uh, even in algebraic geometry. I was told by uh, some algebraic geometer, and so so this, this formula here you can probably have two two ways. So one way uh, today I basically use uh, one way is it says uh, originally you have some uh, integration of a matrix and so on, then it becomes polynomial, interpret polynomial. But you can probably also, like, uh, because hyper discriminant is not easy to study, you might uh, using this formula also to, to study them by, by curvature, by <laughs> matrix. <laughs> it might be easier to use the original uh, analytic definition. I don't know, it's hard to see. <laughs> <laughs> the original definition is, uh, is as that, but it's not. Uh, <laughs> philosophically, it's all right. Yeah, but uh, but uh, algebraic does not mean it's easy to do. Right. Yeah, so, <laughs> so so for example, you you check uh, you know these things. For example, you check uh, this uh, even in the classical GIT, you check some whether 
some manifold is stable, it's uh, extremely difficult. Mm-hmm. And uh, the manifold proof uh, is uh, for stable curves uh, are asymptotically stable. Uh, that's easy, but then uh, Giesinger tried to extend to surfaces. In, uh, in a paper in 1977, that's 70 pages estimate, algebraic as numerical estimate. <laughs> uh, one, of, uh, one of the students I took, uh, took me one month to check all the estimate. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's right, I mean. So I actually I thought uh, how many people really read that paper in 1977. It's, uh, uh, some of these I got some idea from, these uh-huh. invariant things. That's, uh, so it's very hard to check stability. So you say it's polynomial, but it's still hard to check. <laughs> <laughs> but now I use a metric, it's easy to check. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to depend. Some problem can go both ways. <laughs> okay. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah.